Hello everybody. It's been a long time. I know life's caught up to me. Um working out in the plants. It's, uh I barely got any time to get on here anymore. But I decided today I would just go over rather at the moment controversial game uh regarding in trains. And that would be Train Sim World 3. Uh, a lot of people aren't really happy with Train Sim World 3 because, well, the original Train Sim World was, I think it was 2018 or 2020. Um, but we're already on our third Train Sim World, and again, have to pay for it if you want all the features and if you want to. I guess by any future DLC, you have to get the base game. Uh, a lot of people aren't happy with the price about it, though. I think Transcend World 2 came out to $30. And this game is about $40 to $50. No, it's $50. I think it's $50. Uh, uh, USD. So, a lot of people aren't happy about having to buy it again. Um, just overall, a lot of wrongs. Um, overall, I I fairly I fairly enjoy it. Um, there's a few bugs, but oh, a few. There's a lot. Um, but we'll go over that on another video. Hopefully, the devs can see that and. Maybe, uh, maybe jump on it and fix it, hopefully. Uh, a lot of people aren't happy because Train Sim World 2 released two years ago, and all the bugs in Train Sim World 2 are still present. They have not been fixed. I don't even think they've begun to fix them. But, you know, hopefully they actually address this kind of stuff in Train Sim World 3. Um, but I'm not holding my breath on it. Okay. So, we are in the main menu. A lot of things have changed. We have a training center. And, you know, we have, we can jump into a game. All kinds of stuff. There's just different ways you can play this. I ended up getting the deluxe version it was like two dollars more for two or three dollars more for uh the deluxe version which just came with the spirit of steam um during pre-orders but if you already have spirit of steam i wouldn't recommend getting the deluxe version as you'll get spirit of steam upgraded version in the uh in the uh if you upgrade to Train Sim World 3. Um, on September 6th, all your DLC from Train Sim World 2 and some of it from Train Sim World 1 will be ported over, but you do have to download it all. So that's going to be a lot of downloading for some people. So I guess we'll take a look at the, tr the uh, training center. <laughs> Now, one of the biggest things that this game has to offer is the dynamic weather, the volumetric clouds, uh, and new lighting. So we will take a look at that. Let's set it to July. All right, let's see. Now you can see the volumetric clouds. It's a major, major improvement. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't even see that there. Um, 
It's a major improvement in these clouds. Whenever they cover up the sun, they will cast shadows on the, uh, you know, on the surrounding area. So it's it's pretty cool. You can see the reflections are absolutely amazing. Um, that is actually one of my biggest points in this game, is that the reflections are just spectacular. I mean, look at that. You can actually see the clouds in the reflections. Um, I actually think they have real-time reflections on here. And this game is littered with bugs, but it, it's not unplayable, but it's just something to note. I mean, you still can't really look straight at a mirror, but if you look to the side of it, you have these real-time reflections, and that is absolutely amazing that we can get all those reflections and... It doesn't really hit on the performance side. I'm running a... Uh, I see there's bugs like that. Just a level of detail bug. A lot of the bugs are level of detail bugs. Yeah. Let's just go look at this engine. See, they also upgraded the uh, coupling animation. Sorry, I'm moving it to one engine because I don't want to have to start up both of them at the same time. Let's see. Turn the fuel pump on. I don't really want that annoying cab signal. So we'll leave that off for now. Number boards. Engine run. Control. How am I supposed to? There we go. No? Yeah. I guess I didn't hold it for long. Oh, there we go. I mean, the sounds are just amazing, though. I, I mean, I have to give them props for that. I mean, they really knocked it out of the park. I granted, they can be better, but it's better than what we've had before. Um, I know a lot of people complained about the noise, or the uh, sounds. But, again, I, I personally... Oop. I gotta set the engine to run. There we go. I always forget to do that. Huh. Well, another thing. I guess zooming in isn't gonna work now. There we go. You have to, uh... There we go. 
you have to, uh, a lot of these don't really, uh, see? They don't go over this in the, uh, they don't go over this in that game. In the, uh, what's it called? Dang it. In the training modules. So you actually do miss quite a bit of stuff. To lead and cut in using the display screen. It is in lead. It's in lead. I don't know what the... But overall, just the visuals of this game is just amazing. The uh, lighting, the atmosphere, it's just, it's a lot better. I like it a lot more. Even if this is the test route, which, I don't know, I've already seen a lot of people enjoying the test route. They, uh, they take these engines and they try to go as fast as they can. And oh, well, there's a train already made right there, and started. <laughs> the training center's really cool. Uh, if you don't know anything about trains, I would highly recommend going there or going on this little place. It goes over quite a bit for you, though. I don't think any of these work, but it's a really cool little place, you know. Personally, I like, <laughs> I only get the American routes. Um, not really wild about any other country, but to each their own. Um, so we will try Cajon Pass. And I'm not going to spend the whole time driving on one route. I'm just going to go over what has changed, what hasn't. Um, now, here's one more thing um, I'd like to point out. This is in the desert, and it is, well, even at that, even for July, I think they got the uh, temperature wrong, like really wrong. Uh, even at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, it's still 69 degrees. I live in southeast Texas, and it, I wish that it would get to about that, that temperature, even in September or December. So, and I don't even live in a desert climate, so. That is one of the, I would say that's a bug, but I don't think it would be considered. It's just completely wrong data is what it is. There we go. Um, my other problem. I don't know if somebody corrected me on it, saying that 5 o'clock or 5.30 is the correct time for the sun to be rising over here, but it just feels really off to me that it's 5.30 and it's this, this bright outside. It's like, but I mean these road textures are just... And they're all going the same direction. <laughs> no. Oh no. 
What is going on here? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can't. I'm sorry. Um. Yeah. Like, like, and also another thing, school buses are everywhere. Like, look at that. There's, there's one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, six, eight. Oh my gosh. Nine, ten. <laughs> it just keeps on going. There's more spawning in. There's just way too many school buses. It just, just doesn't really look right. And then there's, here's the really cool feature. You can see the uh, light, but that cloud blocks the light right there, and therefore gives you a very good amount of shade. And then that is a really cool feature. Um, so, yeah. We'll start up in the ES44. I'll go over the features inside the ES44 while we're driving. Let's get the gauge lights going and pop this thing into drive. Oh, come on. Personally, I don't I wish that like from going from bright to dim, there's no difference in the headlight. Usually it supposed to get brighter. I'd love if we had like a little headlight flare or something going on there to make it feel like it's actually shining, but we don't right now, sadly. Um, okay, so inside the cab of the ES44, we got almost everything's operational. We got these visors, uh, all these lights, and yes, you can change the uh, brightness if they have a little brightness adjuster. Can't really change that. I think that's yeah, that's that's for speakers. I don't think we would have any use of that. Got the wipers. Uh, have windows open without any buggy problems. Um, another really cool feature that I didn't know about, I usually click this on just just to, I don't know, add to the realism, but whenever I clicked it on this time, I was like, wow, the fan actually moves. And what's really even cool about that is you can actually control the speed of it. It's a feature we didn't ask for, but I didn't know that I needed it this much. And it even has like a little sound. Um, you really have to be listening for it, but uh, it even has one here that also works. And got the cab light. And this is another bug, but the nose light works, but it is extremely bright and it floods into the cab. The horn there. Let's see. Three. Um, and we also got new train cars. Well, the uh, I think they're called maxi stacks. Basically, what it is is from here all the way to here is one single train car and they share one truck. Two cars sharing one truck. And that is something that a lot of people were looking forward to. It's really cool, but it's not like game changer for me. Um, I personally like the fact that we have more colors in the uh, stack trains. 
better than uh, CSX Heavy Hall, where it was literally just... It was either blue or white, or just... Like in the uh, beta days on there, it was just white, or it was just blue. There was no, like, they didn't mix them up. Those were the days. Oh, now we're speeding a little bit. But overall, the lighting in here, way better. Uh, you can see even the road texture has a shiny black top appearance to it. it it's just... Overall, it just gives you that nice feeling. I think the dynamic brake also... Yeah. So that's, you know, everything is operational. Um, even down to the brake pipes. I mean, it is just absolutely... It, it's really nice. I enjoy this game a lot. Um, everything's well detailed. I mean, the textures are nice. Like, really nice. Like, look at all the, uh... You can see where, like, rain or fuel has spilled out or fell on the uh, fuel tank. Um, the engine doesn't look as dirty as, as I would like them to be, but it still has that appearance that it's used. Uh, so far, uh, it, it's, it's really nice. The, uh, even the fans, oop, still speeding. And really speeding now are these little fans right here also spin that's really cool I'm not playing for uh, more so just trying to show off all the features the trucks are still independent from the engine, so they can, like, bounce around and move while the engine's just sitting there. A really cool little feature. Um, and also, PTC antennas. Uh, only thing I wish that we had on this route was the defect detectors. I wish that they would actually work, but, you know, who knows? They might add it, they might not add it. In my mind, I think they probably will not add the, uh, I don't think they're going to add that in the game, but it'd be something cool later on down the road. So, there's clouds, really fluffy. And with dynamic weather, you'll watch as either these clouds will all disappear or they will all, um, they'll start growing, get bigger, they start raining, um, and then if you're in, like, time of December or so, it'll actually start snowing and the snow actually builds up on the ground and actually over the rails, which I think is way better. And there's the SD40-2. And we'll say enough with this train and we'll go over. We'll look at the snow, snow effects. Let's see. And we'll do this in the SD40.
and granted the uh, uh, according to locals Cajon Pass does not really get a whole lot of snow but when they do it is really cool so Let's see. I think that's supposed to rain. It's supposed to be snow. I see this is what I'm talking about with bugs. It's not supposed to be raining, it's supposed to be snowing. What are you doing? <laughs> well, I wanted to show the snow, but okay. Um. <laughs> I think a really cool feature would be, uh, would be, I guess, being able to adjust your, uh, being able to adjust everything in game like your uh your time or the you know your weather snow rain wind if you could like adjust that while in the actual game because it is all uh you know if you wanted snow the snow actually builds up or I don't know why it's still raining. Should be snow. It worked the other day. I don't know why it's not working now. <laughs> it's not supposed to be raining in the snow. What is this? <laughs> I'm trying to show off some cool features and it's not working. <laughs> I guess this is going to turn out to be a bug review. <laughs> Can't. Oh, man. Come on. Yeah, we're going to turn off. We'll do custom weather. Hopefully it works. It's... There we go. That's weird. That's really weird. Okay. We'll set the, uh, we'll watch the snow build up. That'll be cool. I guess it has to be under 30, 32 degrees. So, oh my gosh, why is it changing? Uh, no snow level, do that, wind strength, <sighs> hopefully it works this time, <laughs> I'm tired of backing out, you can see, I mean, this is the pre-release, so hopefully this kind of stuff gets addressed, but again, I'm not holding my breath. All right. Let's see, is it actually snowing? It is snowing now. So you'll watch as everything will turn white. Um, also, that's another thing. <laughs> There's still raindrops in the snow. That's not supposed to happen, but see, everything's everything starts to turn white, and the snow will actually build up. Um, for some reason, whenever the snow gets on the couplers, it turns like a pink color. It just, that don't look too good. Um, and another thing I really wish that we could see is the snow actually building up 
on top of the engines or the train cars. Uh, but we'll start driving. We'll watch the uh, landscape change around us. That's all good. Uh, and this is just like CSX Heavy Hall. You can actually access and use everything in the control cabinet. So that's pretty cool. So we'll get moving. Wait for signal to change. There is no signal. see it just changing the headlights from bright dim medium and bright don't really look any different on the actual engine of course i guess we have to wait <laughs> okay Okay, I guess we will wait. <laughs> uh, while we're waiting, we'll go ahead and go over the features in here. The heater does work, as funny as that sounds. I don't know if y'all can hear that. It actually has a sound. Um, if I want the AC on, set it to high. Also has a sound. Both of them. It's not just all. It's not just one. Um, I move out the way. Uh, even this little heater right here. also can uh, also be turned on and has its own sound. Uh, let's see. Sadly, no bathroom. I know, y'all are very upset about that. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know about that. Okay. Well, you can actually... Um, again, I don't see any signal out there, but, you know. <laughs> Alright, and we will go outside real quick, show you the engine room, also, just like CSX Heavy Hall, is how you start up the SD40-2. Engine prime and start, and also the governor can also be cranked. I think they ended up removing that feature in Train Sim World 2, or they didn't allow it on certain engines. And even though the governor was there, it was very upsetting for me because I always enjoyed going and uh, cranking down on that. Oh, well, that's why. This slow-moving train. It's taking its time. It's okay. We're not in any rush. Uh, you can see the uh, ground starts getting white. Still, there shouldn't be any... Uh, no rain effects. Um, hopefully they address that. But it looks... It looks a lot different than the actual ground texture. Unlike Train Sim World 1 or 2, they would, um, it would just be 
completely white. It wouldn't have this little texture kind of look to it, where it looks like it's uh, going in, or just covering it with a white. Um, you can see the... They added a lot more ambient sounds to the roads, uh, everywhere actually. See, this is also another. <laughs> oh no. I don't know what they were thinking with this. Some of these roads are just absolute dog water. Just awful. Um, oh, where's my train? Okay, there I am. Alright, so we'll go back over here. You can see it's starting to get wider and wider. The bushes, the shrubs are starting to change color. Not a big fan of that. Um, and the trees, I think, they don't even... They don't lose their leaves. Um, I personally wish that... They would just go ahead and just have the trees not have leaves at all. But, I don't know. I've been asking for that since Transom World 1. I don't think it'll happen now. <laughs> but, whenever the snow gets... I think it's starting... No? Oh, there's another train. See, that's what I was talking about with the school buses. I don't know how many school buses y'all can count through this, through this video, but there is just way too many. Let's see, proceed as signals indicate. There's no signal. Oh, whatever, we'll go. Uh, yeah, I know. Gotta s turn the brakes off. Ooh, I think it's happening now. Yeah. So you can actually see the snow level rising over the ties. And look at that. There's even a little kick up effect. From the uh, train moving by through there real fast makes all that powdery snow just it is a really nice little effect and it all streams behind see even I'm starting to kick up some of the snow just small little features like that that uh bring a lot to the game. Um, although I really would wish that there could be snow on top of the actual engine, but I don't think that'll happen anytime soon. Uh, your sun visors can be moved and positioned wherever you want them, or at least for the animation. You can put them there. And also, you can move the individual wipers, and it'll actually wipe. Let's see. You have all your cab lights. I'm probably speeding. Nope. Not. Okay. But, so far, I enjoyed this game, actually. Even though it's a little bit buggy, you know. What game isn't going to have bugs, but I'm going to really call out all the uh, bugs that I can so we can all have a better game experience. So they even got the, uh, the camera mounted right there. 
just like in the real world where they would have the cameras. Uh, and there's even a camera on the BNS, on the uh, ES44 C4. So here's the defect detector, but it will do nothing. Nothing happens, sadly. Um, this is a big step up from uh, Sherman Hill, I do have to say, though. Um, all the houses have snow textures. The cars sitting in the parking lot have snow textures. Um, my gosh. Even the seats have snow textures. I don't think that was meant to happen. But it's not anything that most people would notice. But you can actually see the snow rising up on the actual cars. Oh, I might have to slow down. And now, as you can see, the snow... Oh, okay. The snow just kind of slowly builds up, and it's actually building up even more. train doesn't want to slow down at all. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. It, it's, it's a, in my opinion, a lot better than uh, than Train Sim World 2 or even Train Sim World 1. You'll still have bugs like, say, the snow underneath the viaduct. But, I would say, major improvement. Um, I guess most people would ask, would I recommend it? I, I probably would. I would. It's not bad. Um, especially if you already own a lot of Trains from World 2 routes. You can run those engines on this route. I don't think they're going to be adding all the features, like new sky or new lighting to the old maps, but you can definitely drive the uh, regular trains on the uh, on this map. But overall, good experience. I, I would I would recommend this. Um, only things I wish that would change is getting the snow effects to build up on the actual cab or the actual engine and not just like a texture like like kind of like how they have the snow builds up on the uh, train tracks right here just actually mounds of snow just builds up on the train that would be really cool I personally would like that um, they also need to, uh, because this, the, uh, roll-by, or the, uh, snow effect right here, is, in game terms, the car shadow, or the alpha, because that's an alpha texture underneath it is actually overlaying on top of this snow texture that's being built up right here. So that's why you get that ugly cut right there, which can be changed, like, like kind of like that. It's still, you know, but they would have to go through and fix that. Nothing we can do, though. But, so far, good experience. I would, if you want to, if you have the hardware to play it, I would recommend it. Um, oh, one more thing.
before I go. Almost forgot it. One of their big selling points. It's, uh, umbrellas. No. Well, yes, that was actually one of their selling points. Um, this is actually, it's, I mean, it's all right. But lightning storms. I'm going to set it to, I'll do kind of, kind of early. So you can actually see the lightning. But also, I'm going to use that to point out something else with the rain. Because during nighttime, the rain is very, very <laughs> in the way. Uh, especially for the amount of rain. The rain just looks, look at that. I mean, it's barely visible. I mean... In my opinion, rain shouldn't be that long. You know, should just be drops. It almost would probably give somebody a seizure, uh, in my opinion. Um, I'm also going to show one of the really cool little features. I you can see that. That is just absolutely incredible I mean even the little shifter knobs right there even the buttons the chrome on the buttons reflect yeah, the rain is reflecting the computer screen I mean the reflections in this game are just amazing let's turn on the cabin light Um, that's also my other problem with this, is that the rain, so like that looks good, but as soon as you get in the light, you cannot see anything. I mean, it looks good from here, but if you're in the direct view of the light, or in front of the light, it's just bad. Um, you hear the thunder. There's actual lightning. My only problem with the lightning, I'll see if I. Hopefully, we have lightning that strikes. The problem with the lightning is that it looks very close. And I've even had some times where it strikes right next to my trains. That one was actually far. That one was actually how it's supposed to look like. Um, but I've had them strike about as close as this sign right here. Um, and I'm guessing just right off the top of my head that they're using like, you know, a minimum and maximum distance from the player, but they're max distance, or their minimum distance, once you start actually moving, is, you, you catch up to the lightning very quick, and it just does not look good at all. Come on. You can see everything's reflective. Everything. And it reflects the way it's supposed to. Uh, you even have like the little dirt particles right there that block out the light. So I think you can even turn off or turn down the uh, the light on the uh, actual. So that's just way too bright. Now they do make a mod that makes the rain a little bit more enjoyable. Um, 
and I'll try and link that down in the comments uh, for any of y'all that are getting this game or already own the game if y'all have made it this far. Ooh. Personally, I like the lightning storms. They're really nice. Uh, just once you start going really fast, that lightning tends to, uh, you know, get really, really close. Uh, that and also the rain. It, it feels like it only spawns in the light. You can see it spawns, and it's gone. But you don't see it anymore. It just does not look real. Right there, gone. There. And gone. You don't see it anymore. It's just... It's like it spawns only around the character and nowhere else. Only if the character has the light. Let's see, I'm supposed to have it right there in front. Uh, another thing, I wish we could have the, uh, have like a dry thunder or maybe even like a lightning storm where the lightning is striking around, but it's not. A uh, lightning storm where, you know, it's light rain. I don't know what that noise is. Also, the rain effects on the ground it's supposed to happen. Yeah, you see it. Um, overall, I like this. Uh, it's a very good, very good view of uh, thunderstorms. The only thing I don't like, and a lot of people don't like, is the rain. Okay, that's just awful. It just doesn't look good. It only spawns around the character. Um, and I feel like they could achieve, look, see how close that is. Um, I feel like they could achieve a little bit better of an experience if they were to turn up the fog during storms. Okay, the more rain, the higher the fog density and the closer the fog is to the character. Um, so if any of y'all want to uh, dovetail watching this, looking for ideas, I think that would be a really good thing, a little good feature to do. I mean, you have the fog, but if you turn up that fog a little bit more, um, that kind of would add, show that, you know, there's heavier rain without actually adding heavier rain or making the rain look further out. Um, overall, I think that would really help out a good amount here. But, yeah, I, I, let's see if we can get this thing going a little bit faster. Um, as for the lightning, I would have that stuff set up to where it strikes a little bit farther. It just doesn't really look right whenever it strikes right next to you. It makes the lightning feel like it's really small. It feels like it's an actual... which it is an image that's just touching the ground, but it doesn't feel like it's actually lightning. Um, and another thing, I would also try and add, like, I don't know, a little bit of, like, light, whenever the lightning strikes, in that cloud. If y'all are able to do that through the volumetric clouds. So whenever that lightning strikes, that cloud kind of lights up. 
because whenever lightning strikes, it's not just from the cloud to the ground. You also get some of that in the cloud. Um, and all lightning does not strike the ground. You'll see it light up in the clouds every now and then, and, you know, I personally think that that would add a lot more to the game, too. Um, personally, I'm going to end this video right here. Uh, it's been a little bit of a long journey now. So, I think I would recommend this game. Um, I wouldn't recommend jumping on and buying Train Sim World 2 or 1, uh, but, or at least now that this is released, I would stick with this. Um, and who knows, probably in the next two years, we're going to be on Train Sim World 4. But, only time will tell. So... I guess I will guess the next time you see me will be going over the bug reports on this game. Um, we have a fairly large list. Um, just hoping that it'll uh, get addressed. But one can hope. So I'll see you guys in the next time. Peace.